once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, it made my heart in love, and it wrote my name above. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our for he will give He's gonna answer by and by When you feel a little prayer for yearning like your heart to heaven is Then you will find With Jesus makes it right Alright Now sometimes my path seems dream Without a ray of cheer And then a cloud down me High the light of day Sometimes in me, and it may hide the starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Come on, let us have a little talk with, and let us tell them all about our, he will hear up, and he's gonna answer by and when you feel a little breathful, like when your heart to heaven is turning, you will find with Jesus makes it right, all right. I may have doubts and fears, and my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Whenever I go to him, and he knows my every, and I know that just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, now let us have let us tell them all about our He will hear. Don't you know He'll answer by when you feel a little prayerful? I'm like when your heart to heaven is, then you will find when Jesus makes it right. I know it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Don't you know it's all right? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Don't you know it's all right? It's all right. It's all right. All right. All right. I know just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, he'll make it's all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell them all about He will hear, and He's going to answer by. And by when you feel a little prayerful, and like when your heart to heaven is. Then you will find when Jesus makes it right, all right. Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Praises to Him, I sing, onwards I go. Oh, closely to Him, I cling, blessings still flow. Everything I
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our wonderful and excellent God, we come uh, with a prayer of thanksgiving, Heavenly Father, thanking you for uh, all that you are, thanking you for um, the way that you love us, thanking you for being so powerful uh, with so much ability, thanking you for uh, being so merciful. Um, and we uh, truly recognize all that you are. We truly recognize your mercies, Heavenly Father, because we've been through a, uh, a very difficult year, Heavenly Father. Uh, but you uh, have continued to be uh, a loving God, a God that provides, um, a God that protects, um, a God that cares for his children. And we're thankful, Heavenly Father. Uh, you've continued uh, to be a forgiving God um, and a God that's full of grace. And we truly are thankful um, for uh, the love that you have shown throughout this year. We are truly a blessed people, um, blessed to be able to bow our heads before you and um, to share with you our concerns, our thanksgivings, uh, our joys and pains. Uh, we're blessed uh, because we're uh, able to worship you, uh, the Most High, uh, able to open up our scriptures and, and grow in you uh, with truth and understanding, Heavenly Father. We're um, blessed. Uh, because we've been given the charge uh, to bear fruit in your name. Uh, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, uh, for how you've blessed us, uh, for the attention that you've shown us, um, for the way that you've cared for us. Uh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for your son. We're thankful um, uh, that he died on the cross um, and fulfilled the prophecy, Heavenly Father. Um, we're thankful that he's our Redeemer. Uh, we're thankful that he rose again, Heavenly Father, uh, and uh, with all power, um, with all glory, um, and we are able to turn to him uh, to be our um, intercessor, Heavenly Father. Um, we are able to turn to him uh, as our Redeemer. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us. We are thankful, Heavenly Father, for everything that you continue to do for us. Um, we are truly blessed to be a part of your family. And we give you all the praise and all the glory, Heavenly Father. Uh, we love you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He'll keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. From the rain, my God is all heals me, heals me when I'm broken. My strength, where I've been weak, and forever He will reign, He will reign. My God is all He can move, He can move mountains, He'll keep me in the valley and hide me from. The Savior of the whole giver of giver of salvation by his stripes I am healed. My God, my God is awesome today. I am forgiven. Grace is wide. Praise is holy. Oh. 
awesome today. I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. You want to praise His holy name. My God, my God is awesome. Oh, He is awesome. And he shields me when the storms are raging all around me. So the Lord is awesome. Anybody out there know that the Lord, he's my provider. 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 He provides for me. Daddy said he's awesome. Oh, awesome. One more time said, my God is mighty. Yes, he's holy. He is great. And he's awesome. God is awesome. Oh, awesome. My God, my God is awesome. And he can move my Keep me in the valley. And he'll hide me from the rain. From the rain. Oh, heals me, heals me when I'm alone. My strength away. I've been weak and praise His holy name. My God is I want to say good morning, uh, good morning to you, King's Church. Uh, it is a privilege and an honor to have this opportunity to speak to you on uh, by this means uh, today uh, in this season. Uh, thank God for just this opportunity, and I just thank God to have blessed us all to be here. If you're watching, you have so much more to be grateful for than to complain about. God has been awesome. He has been a merciful God. He's been a gracious God. He's been a loving God. He's been a long-suffering God, even in this season. And he's He's all of this, uh, not because of us, not because we deserve it, not because we earned it, not because we merit it, but all because of his amazing grace while we are here. And here we are, the end of the year, in this season that uh, is commonly known and called and referred to as Christmas. And uh, of course, the Christmas tradition has evolved over the years for those who um, who may not 
I know the Lord. It has just become a traditional season of giving. Uh, however, I, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to comprehend and it's difficult for me to grasp to the idea that, that people can subscribe to a fictional character who gets in a red suit, uh, puts on a red suit, jumps in a rain, jumps on a reindeer sleigh, uh, goes from house to house, uh, he's over, oversized, yet he can fit down a chimney to bring gifts and presents. Um, and that's just assuming that homes have a chimney and that you live in a house. But yet still people have a hard time, uh, some people, uh, understanding and even embracing the idea that the Savior of the world was born. Not necessarily on this date, but it can never be a wrong thing or a bad thing or an inappropriate thing to celebrate the fact that Jesus was born. And, and I want to talk to you for just a few moments in this devotional thought, this, this short moment. And I want to invite your attention uh, to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, Hebrews chapter 10. And, and I want to read verse number uh, one through verse number five, verse one through five. And there's a powerful message in this. And we can build from this point just so that we understand some things about the birth of Christ and how the birth of Christ, his birthday, was actually celebrated because of his death day. His purpose was enraptured in his birth. His destiny was poured into his birth. And we're going to talk about that. The Bible says, for the law, since it has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very form of things, can never by the same sacrifices year by year, which they offer continually, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered because the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have had consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there's a reminder of sin year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering has thou not desired but a body thou hast prepared for me. I, I want to talk to you on the, on the idea that he was born to bleed. He was born to bleed. First of all, we have to understand that the Jesus we know of and that people commonly celebrate in this season is the incarnate Christ meaning this is the Christ in flesh. This is the Emmanuel of God. This, this is the Jesus, the, uh, the, the Yeshua that has come in flesh. But John has something to say about the pre-existent Christ. The Bible says, or the pre-existent word, and we're going we're gonna to look at that. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse number 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You drop down, well, it says all things were made by him and for him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. You look in John chapter 1 and verse number 14, it declares, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So we see here that there is the pre-existence of Jesus in the word and then he becomes flesh and now we have what's called the incarnate Christ. Uh, the, the, this is Jesus, the Jesus of the nativity scene in this season, the Jesus, uh, uh, who, who is in the manger in this season, the Jesus who is wrapped in swaddling clothes in this season. However, it's an, it's important to understand what was happening and what Jesus represents. 
You see, in the Old Testament, according to Hebrews chapter 10 and according uh, to the first five books, uh, the books of the Pentateuch, mainly, uh, namely everything from Exodus on to Deuteronomy, what we find there was the law pertaining to sacrifices, particularly in Leviticus. And in that time, in order for the sins of the people to be to be rolled forward, they had to bring a, a, a lamb, they had to bring a bullock, they had to bring some animal. And now the particular part of the animal, uh, the particular distinction of the animal, that it could not be an animal, it could not be a lamb, it could not be a goat, it could not be a bullock for various sacrifices, but for the for the for the uh, Passover, it, it could not be a lamb that was blemished. It had to be a pure lamb. It had to be an innocent lamb. It had to be a young lamb. It could not be defiled in any way, which means that it could not have spot or a blemish on it. It could not be wounded. It could not be crippled. It had to be. It had to be a perfect representation of the flock. It had to be pure. It had to be uh, clean, clean. And so this is what was sacrifice. And I know I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I want to speak to those of you perhaps who may not be as familiar. And so what they did is they put this sacrifice on the altar. They put this sacrifice on the altar. They, they, they slayed this sacrifice. They killed the sacrifice, this lamb without blemish, this innocent creature for the sake of guilty people of the guilty for the sins of of the people for the sins of the priests for the sins of the nation of Israel so what you have is you have the innocent dying for the guilty now what was looked at was not the guilty what was looked at was the innocent so what you have is you have uh you have the bestowal of the innocent on to the guilty while the innocent dies like the guilty deserves to die. Okay. And this was the sacrificial system, the lamb, the lamb of sacrifice, the lamb that was given, the lamb that was offered, the lamb who was killed, the lamb that was slain in the Old Testament. And this is how those sins were rolled forward. Now, according to the Hebrew writer, these sins did not cleanse the conscience. These sins did not do away with it. I remember going to the doctor uh, before my kidney transplant and I had to go to the doctor and I had to get my medications adjusted and I had to get things adjusted and I had to go every three months and I was making it from good report to good report and that good report would happen and then I would wait three months and I would have to go get checked again and get things adjusted and it was just a tedious process just to go every three Three months and just to know that uh, that as long as I had this problem and as long as I was being dialyzed, I had to keep going to get things adjusted every three months, just three months after three months after three months. And there was nothing lasting. There was nothing that was uh, it, it, it was treatment. It wasn't necessarily cure until I got my transplant. And then all of the three months visits stopped and all of the and, and, and I still get checked up, but I didn't have to go every week to dialysis as part of the treatment and all of that repetition stopped I got to a place where I was able to do away with the treatments and all of the three months visits because of the treatments it's kind of like that you know in the old testament every year they had to do this sacrifice because it did not rid them of sin it was a temporary it temporarily appeased god it was not even what god wanted he wanted the heart of the offerer he wanted them to be cleansed but it was what he provided for them and according to hebrews chapter 10 it was a shadow of what was coming in other words, it was the candle at nighttime that would burn through the night until the sun began to shine. Because when the sun shines and you open the blinds, the candles of last night are no longer necessary. Well, what was happening? What happened was that God in the fullness of time, he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus. And what does it mean that he sent Jesus? It means that God took on flesh. He sent the son of God, the logos in the flesh. 
Now, according to this text, the Bible says, and according to verse number five, that uh, four and five, that it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It was impossible. And then it says that therefore, and he quotes a psalm, he says, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offerings thou has not desired, but a body thou has prepared for me. Well, what was going to do away with the temporary sacrifices of goats and bulls? Well, it's, it still had to be the innocent Factor. The innocent factor still had to be there. The clean factor still had to be there. The unblemished factor still had to be there. But it wasn't going to be through a bull or a goat or a lamb. It was going to be through the very son of God. So the very birth of Christ was a celebration because of the purpose of Christ. The very birth of Christ was him having a body so that he can die and be sacrificed. You need to understand, you and I need to understand that uh, that Jesus uh, was in the spirit prior to verse 14 uh, verse 14 of John chapter one. In other words, even in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And a spirit cannot bleed. A spirit cannot be hung on a cross. A spirit cannot be sacrificed. And so what God did in the fullness of time is he gave, put on flesh through his son Jesus, and he put this flesh on because uh a spirit have not flesh and blood and cannot bleed. So his birth day had his death day in view. Oh, let me say that again. His birthday had his death day in view. When, when he was uh, worshiped by the wise men, he was worshiped not simply because he was born, but his purpose was part of why he was worshiped. And what was his, what was his purpose? His purpose was to save the world from sin. Like in the Old Testament, the lamb would be slain so that the sins of the people would be rolled away. When Jesus, the perfect sacrifice came and was born and was given a body, that birthday involved and encompassed and included the purpose of him being born and and the purpose of him being born was to bleed. He was born to bleed. He was born to be in perfection what the lamb and the bull and the goat was in imperfection. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse number 29 that when John saw him, he said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And while the world celebrates a Savior being born, the fact that a Savior is born is an indicator that he was born to bleed. For without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, there is no remission of sin. Without innocence dying for the guilty, there is no remission of sin. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, but when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, watch this, without blemish to God, 
Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So I, in this season, in this season, when, when the world looks at the nativity scene, uh, when the world focuses on Mary's little baby and, 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 and there's never, it's never a bad thing. It's never an inappropriate thing to celebrate that he was born. But when you look at why he was born, we have to conclude that Jesus and the birth of Jesus, the incarnate arrival of Jesus, was a situation where his birthday was a celebration for his purpose. And his purpose was to save the world through the shedding of blood. I'm so glad that he was born. I'm so glad that he was given a body. He was given a body so that he can feel the pangs of what it means to live down here. He was given a body so that he, being the son of God, all things being made by him and for him and without him, nothing being made that was made can relate to our pain. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And it's a wonderful thing to know that God loved us so much that he became and born. He was born. He was incarnate so that he knows the pain we feel. So that he knows and identifies and, and, have, and can experience what it means to be in the flesh. But most importantly, I'm glad that he was born and that he was given a body because without a body, <laughs> he couldn't carry a cross. Without a body, he couldn't be nailed in his hands. He, without a body, he couldn't be nailed in his feet. Without a body, he couldn't have a crown of thorns plaited and placed upon his head. Without a body, he couldn't shed blood. And without the shedding of his blood, you and I would not have remission of sins. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We are still fallible, but just as in the Old Testament, the priest had to repent of his own sins. Just as in the Old Testament, God looked not at the person who brought the lamb, but the purity of the lamb itself. Even today, if we put our trust in him and stay covered and be covered by his blood, we can be dressed in his righteousness and through his righteousness be guiltless before the throne of God. The song says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The Bible says, and the, uh, the song says, there's a part of that song that says, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. He was born to ultimately bleed so that we might be saved. Thank God that he was born. Thank God that he died. And thank God that he rose. God bless you, King's Church. I want to thank David Wilson, my, my cohort, my brother, uh, 
been knowing him all my life. Thank you for the invitation. God bless you, King's Church. Keep us in prayer as we keep you in prayer in this season. Be blessed and be encouraged. Thank you for watching our devotion today. We want to invite you to our end of the year sermon series happening on December 29th, 30th, and 31st. On the 29th and 30th, we'll begin at 7 p.m. And on the 31st, New Year's Eve, we'll begin at 10 p.m. This event will be broadcast live on Facebook as well as Zoom. Brother Randall Tucker from Houston, Texas will be our guest speaker. Join us for a time that you don't want to miss.